staff at Scotts Bluff National Monument say work is progressing nicely on the Visitor Center renovation project. KNB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, construction at Scotts Bluff National Monument continues as crews began pouring concrete to the new addition to the visitor center late last week. Ranger Kayla Gasker says the staff is extremely excited to see the expansion portion of the project move into a more visually appealing phase. She says visitors can see there is work being done, which has been pushed back because of the government shutdown. Crews have also been working on the interior of the existing building. And as of late, crews have been building foundation of the visitor center. And now that the concrete has been poured, folks will be able to see some new infrastructure taking shape. Uh, it's looking like more like uh, winter, so we're we're you know we're cautious to give a hard timeline because it's a construction project and it's you know we have weather issues and things like that. But um, we're hoping it'll be done by the end of the year. So we're thinking 2020 will be uh, the year that we will have our, our renovated and expanded visitor center. Gasker adds that Rangers will be posting photos and video updates to their Facebook page to highlight the progress being made. And that page will also be a go-to source for all of the centennial events coming up this summer at the monument. And one of those events was this past Friday and Saturday, as one of the designers of the classic 1980s computer game, The Oregon Trail, spoke to a crowd in Gehring. Game designer Philip Bouchard was asked to come and speak about the game's creation for the 100th anniversary of the monument. In a sit-down interview with KNEB News, Bouchard says that his interest in remaking a classic game was based on the history of the plains itself. The geography, the natural history, the landforms, the, the climates, all these things. I thought, this is fascinating. I want to be able to uh, feel like, what, it's, what is it like to be in these places at these times? You know, you know? Bouchard also mentioned that the game's success is based off of its roots in the education system in the 80s and early 90s in schools across the nation. Well, coming up after the break, a cooler weather-wise week for the region. Bill Boyer will have your full forecast right after this on KNEB.TV News. Platte Valley Companies is your home team financial and insurance network that works for you. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in who you choose to handle your trust. Talking with someone about estate planning is a very sensitive thing. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local, serving our neighbors and friends. Respect for tradition, coupled with vision, that looks to the next frontier. Platte Valley Bank, a Platte Valley company, member FDIC. KNEB presents country music rising star, Dylan Scott. I'm Friday, August 16th at the historic Midwest Theater in Scotts Bluff. Presented by Allo Communications and Vieira Wireless. Tickets are on sale now at the Midwest Theater box office by phone at 632-4311 or at MidwestTheater.com. Dylan Scott, August 16th at the historic Midwest Theater in Scotts Bluff with KNEB. $5 meal deal is the perfect bag lunch. Any of these sandwiches with curly fries and a drink for just $5. Arby's, you're the best mom ever. Arby's, we have the meat. This is KNEV.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meat. Not a bad looking evening out there. Temps are going to fall into the 70s. Then down into the 60s and thankfully only into the upper 40s to near 50 after a very, very cold morning. We dropped down into the low 30s this morning across the region. Weather headlines, so it's going to be quiet this evening. Temps are going to be near normal for the next week or so. 
Rain's going to return to the forecast late in the week, and we could be dealing with some heavy rain out there. Look at that. 68 is all yesterday. Our normal high is 80 this time of year. Low yesterday morning was 43. We dropped into the mid 30s across many areas tonight down to or overnight this morning down to 32 early this morning in Sydney. There's some reports of some upper 20s. Uh, it's Steagle tonight or overnight 29.8 degrees reported by the cooperative observer there in Steagle. Nothing in the rain gauge just a quarter of an inch for the month. So we're only about a quarter of what we should be still over 10 inches for the year about three inches above normal and Indications are there's some rain coming. Also some cooler temperatures. This is not going to change, folks. We're right here in the heart of below normal temperatures over the next 8 to 14 days. Better chances than not of below normal temperatures. And unfortunately, right here through the heart of the middle of the country, we're looking below normal in terms of or above normal in terms of rainfall as well. So better than better than normal chances that we're going to be cooler than normal and wetter than normal through the next two weeks. Uh, at least and that pattern may continue into the summer as it looks like we're going to be kind of stuck 75 in Hayes, 77 in Norfolk. These are temps well below normal for this time of year. We're in the mid 70s right now here in our region closer to normal 78 in Oshkosh, Valentine, Ogallala winds are out of the south 5 to 15 miles an hour. So not much going on uh, out there uh, sensible weather wise severe weather threat today pretty much non-existent. We don't expect anything in the way of showers and storms today. Down tomorrow, we have a marginal risk of severe storms off to our east in central and eastern portions of Nebraska. Then that pushes out completely And Wednesday looks dry, uh, completely dry here across the region. Thunderstorm chances tomorrow are going to be pretty slim in our area as well. Just a stray chance of a shower or storm tonight. A few clouds are overhead. That's it. Uh, those move on as we go through the overnight hours. And we're going to be dealing with the backdoor cold front sliding its way in here uh, overnight tonight. That's going to cool us down tomorrow even more. Upper 40s for lows across the region tonight. Then for tomorrow, that cold front slides through. We're going to be gusty. Look out for the winds coming during the day tomorrow. It's going to be kind of gusty, kind of raw, maybe pushing an isolated shower across the region. Uh, tomorrow's not going to be a great day at all weather-wise. It's going to be kind of chilly and uh, cool and breezy, making it feel even cooler than these highs that are only going to be in the low 70s, a few upper 60s out there as well tomorrow. So all in all, a uh, below normal temperature tomorrow. A few areas picking up some showers uh, as we go through the day tomorrow. You're going to be pretty light and hit or miss in many areas. So tonight, partly cloudy skies, lows only down to 49. That's uh, 10 to 11 degrees warmer than where we were this morning. Tomorrow, gusty breezes at times. Partly cloudy skies, a stray shower or storm is possible. Look at those winds, 15 to 25. Wouldn't be surprised to see some gusts, 35, maybe 40 miles an hour tomorrow, and highs only in the low 70s. So a chillier day tomorrow. And then our seven-day forecast, we stay in the low 70s Wednesday. Then we warm up Thursday, Friday uh, into maybe the low 80s to near 80 degrees. And we're just going to kind of copy that forecast from Friday all the way through Monday of next week. Temps near 80 with at least uh, decent chances of showers and thunderstorms every single day. Some of those uh, could contain some heavy rainfall producing storms as well. Lows only down into the low 40s as uh, we're going to be stuck in this weather pattern for most of the next uh, two weeks probably. The pecan chicken salad and ultimate BLT sandwiches from Arby's. It's like eating a whole farmer's market. Arby's, we have the meat for sandwiches. Are you ready to join the celebration? Then what are you waiting for? Switch to Viero today and find out exactly why we're better. More towers than the competition, convenient stores in your neighborhood, friendly, helpful customer service, and top phones at excellent values, such as the iPhone XR for free. That's right, get a free iPhone XR when you purchase any other iPhone of equal or greater value. Viero Wireless, your better choice for wireless service. 
Celebrating 25 years in country music, singer-songwriter Tracy Bird performs live at the Midwest Theater in downtown Scotts Bluff. You all know his music, The Watermelon Crawl, Hold in Heaven, and Keeper of the Stars. Tracy Bird, live in concert, Tuesday, June 11th at the Midwest Theater in downtown Scotts Bluff. Tickets are on sale now, 632-4311 or midwesttheater.com. Welcome back. A 20-year-old moral man leaving a reported underage drinking party is facing several charges after attempting to elude arrest. Early Sunday morning, deputies attempted to pull over 20-year-old Trevor Cecil on County Road 11, but instead he accelerated, turned westbound onto Highway 92, and led the deputy on a chase with speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour. Eventually, he pulled over onto a property and was arrested on charges including flight to avoid arrest, willful reckless driving, and driving under the influence. He made his first appearance today in Scottsbluff County Court. Well, a Hay Springs couple is facing felony drug charges after losing a bag containing four ounces of methamphetamine at a Shadron convenience store. Authorities were able to review security video footage and track down Jorge and Shannon Barron at their Hay Springs residence. They were arrested and lodged into the Sheridan County Jail on suspicion of distribution of a controlled substance, possession of methamphetamine, assault on an officer, and other charges. And a new Miss Nebraska was crowned Saturday night during the final night of competition in North Platte. Allie Swanson of Omaha was crowned Saturday night and will represent Nebraska in the 2020 Miss America competition. Gehring native Allison Baird was named first runner-up, while 19-year-old Gehring native Carson Long was named third runner-up. Well, straight ahead, a busy weekend in Scotts Bluff as dozens of athletes partake in the West Nebraska All-Star Games. Chris Cottrell with all the highlights right after this. Why love a rain garden? Let me count the ways. Rain gardens contain and filter water runoff while recharging our underground water supply. They provide habitat for birds, bees, and beneficial insects. Native perennials give four seasons of color and texture, beautifying a home while increasing its value. Established gardens are low maintenance, low water landscape features. Colorful, functional, and sustainable. Rain gardens, brought to you by Tri-City Stormwater. Our water, our responsibility. Take your career to the next level with Shadron State College's online Master of Business Administration program, taught by experienced professors who care about your success. The accredited, fully online MBA program is backed by CSE's more than 100 years of education leadership. Flexible, eight-week courses let you work at your own pace, wherever you are, and CSE's experienced professors are committed to your success. Shadron State College. Real people. Real results. Join us today at csc.edu. With warmer weather comes warmer vehicles. Let the professionals at High Tech Automotive help you with your automotive checking, maintenance, and repair so the heat doesn't beat your vehicle. Take your vehicle to High Tech Auto Service between Bomb Guards and Frank Parts, 632-2731. You said yes. Together, you planned every detail. You married. And then you realized 500 square feet just isn't enough room for two. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. You decide to add another to your family. You start reading parenting books. You're amazed that such a small human could need so much space. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. Now, sports from the First National Bank Sports Desk. First National Bank of North Platte. The bank to think of first. Welcome in. It's the West Nebraska All-Star Recap Edition today from the First National Bank Sports Desk. On Saturday afternoon at WNCC's Cougar Palace, it was the 35th annual West Nebraska Volleyball Game with the West team trying to make it three straight wins in the series. The West jumped out quickly, taking the first set 25-20 behind five kills from Alliance's Emerson Siza in set two. Both teams well, they went to completely different lineups, but still the same result with the West winning 
to 14. Mackenzie Anderson of Ogallala and Kiana Wilfred from Mitchell each had solid sets as the West went up early, two cents to love. For the sake of competitiveness then, we needed the East to win the third set and it was back and forth all the way to the wire with Addison Johnson of Cody Kilgore scoring seven points in the set. Johnson helping lead the East to that third set victory, 29 to 27. Match still up for grabs then in the fourth, but once again it was Siza along with Hershey's Channing home, really getting off some big swings as the West clinched the match 25-20. They'd go on to win the fifth and final set of the afternoon 15-8 for a four cents to one win. Siza was named the MVP for the West team with a double-double of 17 kills and 19 dings. The East MVP was Cody Kilgore's Johnson. The Sportsmanship Award winners were for the West, Mackenzie Anderson of Ogallala, and for the East, Courtney Rice from Mullen. Overall now, the West has won 12 of the last 14 volleyball all-star matches. Now about the time the volleyball match was wrapping up, the rains were setting in here in the Scotts Bluff area that afternoon. Off and on rains and colder temperatures were definitely part of the storyline exiting the 41st edition of the West Nebraska All-Star football game at Bearcat Stadium. It was a defensive slugfest won by the West team 6 to nothing. The lone touchdown of the night came early in the second quarter as Sydney quarterback Eric Doty connected with Lucas Paluchek of Ogallala on a nine-yard touchdown pass. That was it. That was it for the scoring on the night, and that score was set up by one of nine turnovers in the game. The reins really slickened up the field, and at times we saw some ball control issues, center quarterback exchanges, some possible slick balls that made it tough on quarterbacks to throw it, and some tricky cutting and planting conditions for running backs and receivers. Two key, though, fourth quarter interceptions really helped seal the deal for the West team in the victory. Valentine's Lane McGee Henley had a huge pick inside the five-yard line on a key fourth down stop to preserve the lead. And then late in the game, Scotts Bluff's own Jeremiah Delzer drops into coverage and gets the game-sealing INT for the West. Paluchek finished up with three big catches and the lone touchdown. He earned offensive MVP honors while McGinley was a playmaking machine for the West, taking home defensive MVP honors with him to Valentine. The Sportsmanship Awards went to Kozad's Josh Stahlbomber and Sydney's Zach Pennant. Another West Nebraska All-Star Weekend is in the books. Now some weekend power both at the plate and on the mound led the West Coast Zephyrs to a 3-1 record against Buckley and Lexington. In yesterday's sweep of Lex, the Z's got home runs from Tate Carson, Paul Panduro, and Hunter McCollum, plus Harold Baez struck out 14 en route to the win in Game 2 over Lexington. That was a doubleheader yesterday. The Z's are now 15-5 on the season, traveling for games Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Gearing Platte Valley Companies, they split a pair on Saturday at Casper, scheduled for two tonight, starting at 5 on the road at Buckley. That's the latest today from right here at the First National Bank Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Ryan's coming back with a look at that community calendar right after this on KNEB.TV. Sometimes events in life are planned. Others, a happy surprise. No matter what life change you're navigating, whether you're getting married or just want a bigger yard for your pup, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. Retirement, a new season in life where you can change how you live it. And something easier, convenient, that feels just right. When it's time, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. Known previously as Angela's Bridal and Boutique in downtown Scotts Bluff, now tuxedos and men's formal wear by Angela's. Brought to you by Weborg 21 Center. We are excited to offer you more one-on-one -on -one customer service. Whether you need a tux for the wedding, a suit for the office, or you're just ready to step up your everyday fashion. And don't forget our second location. Angela's Boutique is now located at Bianco & Company in downtown Scotts Bluff. Still empowering women to look and feel their most confident. The same great boutique, now just down the street. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, 
we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Now is the perfect time to upgrade your windows with Renewal by Anderson of Wyoming. For a limited time, buy one window and get the second window at 40% off. Plus, no down payment, no monthly payments, and no interest for 12 months. Call to get a free, no-hassle estimate on superior quality Anderson windows featuring advanced technology and an industry-leading warranty. All with no down payment, no monthly payments, and no interest for 12 months. And our limited time, buy one window, get the second for 40% off special. Call Renewal by Anderson of Wyoming at 307-215-7493. June 23rd through the 29th is National Lightning Awareness Week. Make sure to protect your family and yourself from lightning. It's always a good idea to install lightning rods on homes and surge protectors in the home. Remember that lightning can strike many miles ahead of a storm front. Beware of weather forecasts and watch for developing thunderstorms. So when thunder roars, go indoors. This message is brought to you by Roosevelt Public Power District, your touchstone energy partner, the power of human connections. Platte Valley Companies is your home team financial and insurance network that works for you. Platte Valley Bank provides a broad range of financial tools for your short and long-term business needs. Our experienced commercial lenders will work with you every step of the way to help your business grow. At Platte Valley Bank, we are proud to provide you with local decisions by hometown people for your hometown business. Respect for tradition, coupled with vision, that looks to the next frontier. Platte Valley Bank, a Platte Valley company, member FDIC. And finally tonight, the circus rolled into Scottsville Fleet last week, and not only was it great family entertainment, but a fundraiser as well. Scottsville Professional Firefighters Local 1454 brought in the Carson and Barn Circus for four shows on Friday and Saturday. Crowds were delighted with elephants, acrobats, the ringmaster, and all the entertainment that comes with the circus. But as Scottsville Fire Captain Justin Houston explains, the circus also serves as a fundraiser for them as well. The circus has been really great. They give us a percentage of ticket sales back as a fundraising event for us. And we use those funds, bringing those in to help support local programs and events that we put on throughout the year. So this is one of our big fundraisers that we do every couple of years and to help us build those funds to give back to the community. They say the shows went off without a hitch and there were lots of smiles and laughs had by all of those in attendance and reiterated their thanks for supporting your local firefighters by attending. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you here next time. <laughs>